We're going to look at the auto select tool, which is definitely one of my favorite tools. Uh, let me actually, we were on the marquee tool. And let's clear this. Let's create a new canvas, actually. So close, do not save, and file new. Okay. So get a new canvas, and let's put down some black ink with pen. And let's, uh, let's just close the lines up so that we have an inside and an outside for this. And yeah, that's fine for now. Let's just do that. And let's select our, this uh, auto select, which looks like a magic wand and click on that. And we have several options that we need to uh, think about here. I guess we can just do, to start off, we're just gonna use the refer edited layer, which is only gonna consider this black line. So what this tool does essentially is when I click on something, it's going to select all the color of that color until I get to the line, like a, a line of a certain darkness or difference from my the line that I'm working with. Let me just show you what I mean. So if I click right here, it takes a second, and you can see that it's selected, like kind of like our marquee tool, it's selected all this area around here, but it stopped when it got to the black. It said that that's, that color is different enough from the white that I'm going to stop. <laughs> and uh, it made that distinction. And the inside of this is not selected. So to show you what is selected, I can, I'm can i going to make it green and fill it. So you can see what was selected. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Now I could do the same thing on the inside. I could also do the same thing on the black line itself. If I click the black, you can see the black has been selected, but the white hasn't because when it got to the white on both sides, it, it says, okay, that's a different color. And I'll show you what, it, so you can see that it has been selected. I'm gonna undo that, Control Z. Now I can also, I have these other options. I can turn off follow adjacent pixel. So right now, when I clicked it, it was, or before, when I clicked it on the white, it followed the pixels until I got to this, this black. But if I click it now, it's going to follow and look for the white inside and outside. It's going to look throughout the entire picture for the white and select it. So now the area that was selected is pretty much everywhere but the black. So that's pretty cool. That's definitely going to be helpful with coloring and different things. I'll show you some later on to some other things you can do with this. I actually use this for coloring and I know not some colorists would probably be horrified that I do that or whatever, but I think it's a great way to color and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, clear this and or control Z and go back. So now that was following the uh not following the adjacent pixel. Now if I um if I have follow adjacent pixel checked and let's say I have on my uh, line a gap. Let's say I just cut a gap in there, a little hole. And this may happen when you're, when you're drawing, you may not have perfectly sealed up lines, but you want to be able to like color in here really easily. So what we can do is go back to our auto select, oops, auto select. <laughs> and we have this close gap option. And the higher it is, the higher, the bigger the gap that'll close. I think with two, that should be enough to close this gap. And I can find out, I click inside. And you can see, oh wow, it's still not sealing it. It may be because I'm working on a different size page from what I normally do. And it may be like really uh, not have much, uh, it may not allow much, much of a gap. <laughs> Let me try this with a, slightly smaller gap. Let's see what happens. Usually it seals it fine. It's still not sealing it. I'm not sure what's going on actually. Oh, you know what? I usually have it on refer other layers, so I think that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. So for some reason it needs to look at all the layers. I'm not clear why that is, but yeah, so the one that I use in the most anyways is 
the one that looks at all the other layers. So if it's not closing the gap, that may be the reason. But you can see that it actually sealed it up at, at some point and said this is too narrow a gap and I'm going to limit it to there. Oops, I accidentally clicked outside. Yeah, so there you go. And if it is on select additionally, I could select outside and it'll select everything. Yeah, so basically when it is refer other layers to select, it looks at every layer in your drawing. When it's talking about selection for referred layers, that's reference layers. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little more with colors. So yeah. Also, you notice that it's the selection is actually going across into the black a little. And that's because we have area scaling on. And the higher that number, the deeper into the other colors it's going to go. So if I release this, deselect, and I select in here again, now that it's at 20, it's going to go a lot deeper. Yeah, you can see that's pretty deep. And I use this with coloring. Like I, I usually add a layer and then I'll just color behind my inks. And that's one option for coloring, but you don't have to do it that way. So in addition to that, we also have color margin, which is going to be basically what color do we include? Like the higher this color margin, the more it's more colors it's going to accept. So if I have, for example, some red, <clears throat> oops, I am on the wrong layer. I have some red, some green, some yellow, some dark, darker color. Okay, so if I, I have this uh, color margin, and I'm actually going to turn off follow adjacent pixel. So it's just going to look in the entire picture. And if I click on white, it's going to say what colors are close enough to white to match that color and include it with our selection. So I have the color margin really high, so it's going to probably get all these colors, maybe not the black, but most of the other colors. So I click and again, it doesn't have to worry about gaps or anything now. It just jumps through the entire picture. Actually, you know what? It didn't get any of these because white is so extreme. So it didn't get anything except the white looks like and it crossed over you know into the margin a little because the scaling is on to 20 but if it wasn't it wouldn't include those at all so I'm gonna undo that scaling can also go into the negatives and this will actually create like a border around it let me show you you can see so if I if I filled it now with uh, I don't know whatever we actually have a border around everything. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Let me show you though the uh, when I click on a color, for example, if I click on green, and I'm going to put the scaling back at zero. If I click on the green, I think it's going to include all the colors because this this color margin is really high. Yeah, you see it, it got all the colors. It did not get this really dark, like red brown, and it didn't get the black, but the green and the red were close enough and the margin was high enough that it decided to include those when I said, find similar colors. If I undo this and I turn it way down and click on the yellow again, yellow is all that's selected. So if you find it selecting too much or more than you want it to, you should probably turn your margin down. And if you find it's not getting enough, turn it up. I adore this tool and I, I use it all the time. And uh, I think you'll like it too. Once you start playing around with it, you can select into colors and around colors in, in amazing ways. So play with it and see what you can come up with. But I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it when we look at coloring.